It's A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Appreciate you guys joining me. Thanks for making A to Z part of your daily sports listen. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a like there. And wherever you get your podcast, give us five stars. Who gave us a thumbs up rating, whatever it may be. Thanks for all the love and support you guys have given Locked On Sports Atlanta. All right, before we get to the NBA Finals and what could benefit the Hawks, time for Shovels of Wisdom. Brace yourselves, because it's time for the Shovel of Wisdom. That's right. If you want to give a shovel, you can do so on my Twitter account, at Mark Zeno. Just use the hashtag Shovel of Wisdom. And today, my shovel goes to Tommy Pham. You guys know Tommy Pham? Major League Baseball player, Cincinnati Reds. You might have heard about this last week where he uh, was playing against the San Francisco Giants. Uh, and before the game started, he went over to former Braves, now Giants outfielder, Jock Peterson, and slapped him in the face. He said, what the hand said in the face? Slap. And there was a little bit of a uh, dust-up, if you will. Major League Baseball um, suspended him. Uh, they, the next day, they deemed it inappropriate conduct and fan was suspended for a game and peterson had mentioned that it's all over fantasy football well now fam you know after that embarrassment that you did that over fantasy football you loser uh sore loser at that now we get that fam is taking shots at mike trout as the league's commissioner um and that mike trout was the one who sort of precipitated this whole thing and could have prevented it all uh and according to pam said Trout did a terrible job, man. Trout is the worst commissioner in fantasy sports because he allowed a lot of stuff to go on. He could have solved it all. I don't want to be the bleeping commissioner. I've got other stuff to do. Trout didn't want to do it. We put him in, so it's kind of our fault, too, because we made him commissioner. God, look, um, Tommy, Mr. Fam, uh, if, uh, if, if where you are at your stage of your career is taking shots at the best baseball player on the planet uh, for his lack of fantasy football, Commissioner skills, uh, you're not doing well. <laughs> like, honestly, like, <laughs> if that's the worst thing Mike Trout has to deal with, Mike Trout's doing just fine. He's doing just fine. Tommy, I don't think you're taking shots at Mike Trout. Anybody's going to look any different at Mike Trout because he's a bad fantasy football commissioner. Go we'll take a lap, Tommy. Everything will be fine. All right. Um, one quick note about the Hawks here. As we see the news that Quinn Snyder, head coach of the Utah Jazz, may be exiting from the team there, ending his eight-year tenure there. He's got two years left on his deal. They're in contract negotiations on an extension. The front office has told him he can come back and stay uh, on the rest of the two years. It looks like the front office wants to retain him. Schneider does not have the warm and fuzzy at this point in time. You know, and he said that he's, he's expressed no interest in discussing open jobs. So he is looking for something else. And the Jazz don't know how to solve this problem yet. The only reason I bring this up is because if the Hawks, who may be interested in either Donovan Mitchell or Rudy Gobert, uh, if they have a design on getting one of those players, if you get rid of the head coach and you break the whole thing up, then guess what? It's a lot easier to get those players because the organization may turn around and just say, okay, let's start the rebuild, get as much as we can get for the players that we have, and we can go from there. That may be something that may net the Hawks uh, an easier time at getting some of those other players, right? Like if they decide to break up the entire Jazz, it's a lot easier. If Quinn Snyder stays and says, I want Gobert here and I want Mitchell here and we're going to make this thing work, those players don't become available, the Hawks have to look elsewhere. Just something to keep your eye on. Just something to keep your eye on. All right, game one between the Boston Celtics and Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. Coming up on Thursday night, so tomorrow. Uh, I did a quick preview of this from a betting standpoint. Obviously, you know that's all that I really care about. Um, but nonetheless, I think Golden State wins the series. I do like Boston here in game one getting the points. Um, and I like them because there is a sense for me that, one, this number is going to continue to go up. It opened at three and a half. I think it's already at four. It wouldn't shock me to see this thing by five at tip off tomorrow. 87% of the public is already on the Celtics. I mean, sorry, on the Warriors rather. And that's just a sign for me to run in the other direction. That said, 
Um, I think there's a sense that if Boston's going to win a game on the road in this series, you know, by the way, Golden State hasn't lost a playoff game at home this year. They've only lost 10 games at the Chase Center all season long. One of them, however, was to the Boston Celtics. So they do have that in their back pocket, even though Steph Curry got injured in that game, didn't finish the game, and uh, Golden State loses. But nonetheless, um, they don't lose a lot at home. But if Boston is going to steal one, it's going to be game one. It's going to have to be game one. Because if, if Golden State wins game one, you know they're just going to be in full cruise control, and, and they're going to overpower Boston with a win. I, the outcomes I see are Boston keeping this close and winning, Boston keeping it close and losing, or Golden State blowing them out. Like, and I think that's probably more likely than Boston winning outright. Uh, I think Golden State probably ends up keeping it close and they end up winning the game, um, but maybe only by a bucket or so, by three, whatever it may be, and uh, it goes down like that. But I think if Golden State wins, they're going to blow them out. It'll be a 120-105 final, uh, and it won't be close. And really, that's how game one is going to go down. So uh, from that standpoint, it's very um, tough to diagnose – you know, which way the rest of the series will go without seeing game one, because these are two very good defensive teams. But I still think there's going to be points scored. Um, the, the total at 211 in the first game is a little bit lower than I would have thought it was going to be. So I'm going to take the over, but I've been a sucker for Golden State overs this entire postseason. So I can't I can't help myself at this point in time. Nonetheless, um, I'll take the points with the Celtics. But again, I'm going to wait until we get closer to tip off. And I'll have more on this tomorrow and a couple of different props and and things that I'm looking at along the way. But I'm going to wait until we get closer to tip-off because I truly, truly believe this number is going to continue to go up, and Golden State will be a heavier favorite as we go along. All right, that'll do it for us here on A to Z. Uh, Back tomorrow, make sure you guys check out Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, the ATL Sports Talker with you, everything Braves, Dogs, Falcons, Hawks, all right here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. You guys have a great day. Don't do the craft, anybody. See you.